And welcome back to Black Renaissance. With the death of Fidel Castro and the lifting of sanctions, a lot of people are wondering what is going to happen to Afro-Cubans. My colleague Don Champion went to Miami to get some perspective, and I got a chance to debrief him on what he found. Don Champion, welcome. Let's take a look at a piece that you did uh, just a short time ago, talking to a couple of twin sisters, Afro-Cubans, who have their own business in Miami. Let's take a look at this piece. I need this. Inside this Miami cigar shop, twins Yvette and Yvonne Rodriguez stand out. We didn't come out this way for nothing, you know what I mean? <laughs> Born to black Cuban exiles, they were raised in Miami, a predominantly white Cuban community. It's almost like a test to be like, how Cuban are you? But you're black, but how Cuban are you? But you speak Spanish, speak Spanish. Feeling underrepresented, they created a cigar line called Tres Lindes Cubanas. The three blends. That's our strong, full-body cigar. We call her La Negrita, and that's like a dark-skinned woman. Celebrate the races of Cuba. We come in all different shades. The twins say equality must be a focus as Cuba now moves into a post-Castro era. We're in limbo because nothing is. we're not sure if anything is going to change. Today, blacks in Cuba live in the poorest communities. Historian Jose Perez says afro Cuba Cubans also haven't benefited from recent economic reforms because of blatant racism and exclusion. Because a lot of the same social practices, a lot of the same institutions that we see in Georgia, Mississippi, or certainly South Carolina, Louisiana, have very strong parallels to what we see in the Caribbean. And it's a complex reality. The Rodriguez twins are determined to improve. We are creating a platform for maybe to build an organization. And explain one cigar at a time. Loved their energy uh, when we met them when we were in Miami, and uh, I thought their story was really interesting. Uh, basically, their cigar line came out of the fact that they felt underrepresented uh, in Miami and in discussions about the Cuban experience. And that was certainly their take on this. Their view was uh, that uh, Fidel was bad for Afro Cubans. They're many varied views on that, certainly. Uh, but what was their feeling about uh, the future? I, I think they certainly felt a, a sense of uh, cautious optimism. Uh, you know, I, I think that they, uh, along with uh, a lot of the other Cubans that we spoke to, uh, look at Raul Castro and the rest of his time in office as being more about transition than transformation. As a journalist of color, I, I definitely look at it as uh, sort of my duty to uh, not only seek out these stories, but also tell them when we get uh, the opportunity to do so. You know, you think of the uh, discussions and the coverage of Cuba and after of Fidel Castro's death, and uh, very rarely are Afro-Cubans mentioned. In fact, uh, some of the reaction I got from the piece was from people saying that they didn't even know that there were black people in Cuba. Why was it important to you to get that voice out there? I definitely try to seek out these stories, and I learn a lot about other cultures as well in doing these stories. So I, I definitely could look at it as a way of uh, shining the light on uh, underrepresented uh, communities and people. Are we going to see you go into Cuba anytime soon, <laughs> depending on, on what happens down <laughs> the road? I would love here? to. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We may it's very such a complex uh, culture and history. I would love to. <laughs> and it, it looks like a beautiful island. I know so many people who are going there to visit now. We'll see what happens with this administration. Don, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for your reporting. It's been fantastic. And we look forward to seeing more from you on CBS News Path. Uh, that will do it for us on Black Renaissance. We'll be right back.